Now let's move on to a very important topic, which is rounding. So when I'm doing rounding, I'm trying to make my calculations simpler. For example, consider this number, 65,437. You would agree that this number is way complicated than another number which I might have, which is 70,000. If I do calculations using 70,000, it would, those calculations, addition, subtraction, multiplications would be much simpler than if I were to do the same calculations using this number. This is my actual number. So of course, when I do calculation using 70,000, I lose some accuracy, but at the same time, I gain some speed. So this is what is known as rounding. I'm trying to make my numbers simpler at the cost of losing accuracy. There are various types of rounding. For example, I can round till nearest tens, which means that anything below tens, so in the ones digit, so this is ones, this is tens, this is hundreds, right? so next one is hundreds, this is thousands, and this is 10,000. So when I round till nearest tens, I am making ones digit zero. This is what it means. When I'm round rounding till nearest hundreds, I'm making all the digits below hundreds zero. Same thing with thousands. I'm making everything below thousands, hundred, tens, and ones, all of them zero, and same thing for ten thousands, and so on and so forth. So now let's take an example of rounding this number to nearest tens. So let's look at this number together, 37, the lower, the tens and the ones digit. We are not even concerned about hundreds. Those would remain the same. So I'm rounding till nearest tens. So only numbers I need to look at is tens and the ones digit. Look at this number. This is 37. If I make this number once number zero, what would be the nearest number I can arrive at? So there are two options. Either I can go to 30, right? So 37 sits right here. So either I can go to a lesser number towards 30, or I can take this 37 towards the larger number, which is 40. Of course, you would say 40 is closer to 37. So that's what we choose so that we lose minimum amount of accuracy. My num number is still is very accurate. And when I round this to nearest nearest tens, the number that I get is 6 by 4. This 3 becomes a 4. And this 7 becomes a 0. So what did I do? I actually looked at the once digit. If the once digit, right, there are two paths now. If the ones digit, right, so I'm rounding till nearest tens, I'm looking at the ones digit, I'm looking at the digit right next to the tens digit. And if this digit is five or greater than five, I increment the tens digit. So I do increment tens digit, okay. And if this digit is less than five, then the tens digit remains as is, so I don't touch. Tens digit. So this is what the process of rounding is. It involves the number itself, the number that we are estimating and the number which is right next to the number we are estimating. So let's look at another example. This time, let's try to round this to nearest hundreds. So hundreds is this one. I look at the number right next to hundred, which is tens. I don't bother looking at ones at all. This doesn't have to be considered. This doesn't have to be considered at all. I look at the number right next to hundred, which is tens. This number is less than five, right? If the number is five or less than five. I don't touch the hundred digit at all. So this becomes six, five, four, zero zero and all the numbers here would become zero zero which is correct right because 437 is really very very close to 400 i don't need to take it to 500 at all 437 close to 400 so i go there similarly let's try to do another rounding till nearest 10 thousands this time right? so i'm skipping thousand that you can do for yourself if i want to round this one i look at the 10 thousand so this is this digit and I look at the thousand digit, which is five. Since the thousands digit, right? The digit right next to ten thousands. The thousand digit is five or greater than five. So in this case, it is five. This would have to be incremented. So this seven, six indeed becomes a seven. This five 
becomes a zero and then of course everything below it would become zero if the number right next to the number we are rounding off to is 5 or greater than 5 we increment this number otherwise we keep the number as is so if this were 4 right if instead of 5 we had 4 here then this would have remained 60,000 but there was a 5 here anything 5 or above 5 we take it take it to 70,000 the next one now as soon as we talk about rounding we need to also consider estimation estimation is what we do when we use rounded rounded numbers so if i were to calculate this exact subtraction then it would be an exact calculation i am not estimating anything but instead of using these numbers 5 6 7 3 and 4 36 if i were to use the rounded off numbers then i am really estimating this difference and not calculating it let's take this example if we round it try let's say we try to round it to nearest thousands let's see what happens so this five and there's a six right next to it so this so i'm rounding off till nearest thousands here there is a zero in thousands place remember okay so if i round off to nearest thousands this would simply become this five would become a six and everything here would become zero and then this there's a zero here and after the zero there is a four so this is of course less than 5 this 4 is less than 5 so this 0 would remain as such and this is what I, I get so this estimate is actually very poor because when I am doing this difference my number should have been at least less than 56 73 but here I am getting a number which is more so this estimate is not good okay so we are not using this kind of estimate this is actually very poor estimate so what would be a good estimate if I were to round these numbers to nearest hundreds let's see what happens so this five this six would become a seven because here there is a seven seven is more than five so this six would become a seven and then this four would remain as such because three is less than five so this becomes 400 and this is actually a good estimate so my answer would be so the rule here is that when we are estimating sums and differences we always take the place value of the lowest number and we round everything to it so here the place value of the lowest number is 436 is the lowest number in my in my sum the place value of the lowest number is hundreds so i will round everything to hundreds i will not round to thousand ten thousand no i would round the maximum i can round off is still hundreds right and that would give me a good compromise between accuracy and the calculation the speed the speed of calculation similarly let's see what happens when we are doing products right so rule for sum is you look at the smallest number and the place value round everything to that place value of the smallest number for product there is a different rule and the rule here is also very very simple let's take this product 216 multiplied by 78 of course this is very complicated so we will not try to do this we want something fast so the first thing we did is we rounded off till nearest tens so 78 would of course become 80 and 216 since this is a 6 would become 220 i am rounding till nearest tens so this is still tens of course this is not simple enough so my answer is my calculations are still a bit complicated let's try to round off till nearest hundreds you will say that sir this will become simpler right of course it becomes simpler because 78 remember there is a zero here after 0 there is a 7 so this 0 would become a 1 and this becomes a 100 and 216 would become 200 because there is a 1 here so when I round to nearest hundreds my calculations become simple but this time the accuracy is very poor I am way off my answer is 20,000 way off so what is a good compromise in this case a good way is to round each number right round each number to its highest place value right I am doing it for each number not for the entirety so for each number i look at the place value highest place value here is tens so i round it till nearest tens so this becomes 80 highest place value here is hundreds so i round it off to nearest hundreds so each number i am looking at its own place value and doing the corresponding rounding it's not that i have rounded off everything to tens or everything to hundreds that is not good so i round each number to its highest place value so here of course my answer comes out to be 16,000 which is way way easier also and at the same time it is relatively accurate. 
Now, the problem with this kind of rounding, the rounding that we have seen so far, we have said that if the number, right, let's say that we are rounding till nearest tens, what we are saying is that if the number in the unit's place is 5 or greater than 5, I always take it towards the higher number. Right. So, the tens digit would in here would become 20, this would change to a 3 and this would become 30. If you look at it, it is not very good because 5 is really stamp, slam dunk in the middle. <laughs> so, 5 is in the middle and I am always taking the number 5 towards the higher end. I am always pushing 25 to higher end 30. So, my numbers would continue to become large and large and large. Of course, this was not liked by bankers and statisticians. So bankers don't like it, they would always be at a loss. So all of those bankers, they had a big meeting and they come up with an interesting method of rounding. They are not mathematicians, but they are practical, right? They need to do something here because numbers were all becoming large. The fives would always take them to a larger number. So they didn't like it. So what did they do? This told us that round to a number, if the number that I am, I have is, has a five, right? the digit that I need to consider, right, has a five round to a number which is even. So for example, I am rounding still to nearest tens. Here I have 15. I look at this 5. I will try to go towards a number. Right? So this 5 could have gone to either way. Either this could have gone to 20 or this could have gone to 10. I would try to go to a number which makes the digit I am rounding to an even number. right? So this 15 would become a 20. At the same time, for 25 also I have two ways. I can go to 30. This is what we would have done if we had studied. Right? So far what we have done is we have always said that 25 goes to 30. But I could as well go to 20 right? because 25 is right in the middle. It's right in the middle of 20 and 30. So I could either take it to 20 or 30. What, they what the bankers say is that take this 25 to 20 instead of taking it to 30 take it to 20. So 15 goes to 20, 25 also goes to 20. So half of the time you are rounding up, half of the time you are rounding down and the reason is you are always rounding to a number which gives you an even number where on the digit we are rounding to. Right? So I am rounding to nearest tens. So here I would want an even number that is the rule I am following. Of course, at this level, at this class, you can, you are okay if you always round up. If you always round up your fives, you are okay. But you should know that that is not the only method of rounding in case of a tie. When we have fives, that is not the only method of rounding. Thank you.